fact that Rod Brindamore is not in the Hall of Fame is pretty criminal, but that's a story for another video that will be significantly longer and involve a lot more statistical analysis. What I'm going to talk about today is his recent interview with Elliot Friedman and a relatively recent interview with Elliot Friedman on the 31 Thoughts podcast. And one thing that everyone is really, really taking away from it are some of his thoughts on the officiating. And in my opinion, it's very, very good constructive criticism. So there's several things that he talks about, and I'm going to leave a link in the description to the specific part of this video that was posted on Sportsnet's Twitter so you guys can get a reference of what I'm talking about if you haven't seen it yet. So here was one of his... Here's a rundown of some of his ideas and a couple of other things that I would implement along with it. And I think that they're absolutely genius. So first things first, he says to take two guys off the ice. I think that that's a great idea. Would have it worked a few years ago before all the video review capabilities and stuff that they have now? Absolutely not. So I'm not that old, but I am old enough to remember when the NHL had only three officials on the ice. You had one ref and you had two linesmen. And then eventually it became to where you had two refs and two linesmen. Most leagues in North America, up until about the postseason time frame, they still only have one ref and two linesmen. Even in the SPHL now, you don't typically start seeing two refs until the postseason. So getting guys off the ice in the fastest league in the world that is played on North American size ice, that being the NHL, is probably a good idea. So how do you have the mitigating factors now to where you have more video, less humans, and stuff like that? So if you take two guys off the ice, you free up the ice a little bit more because the officials, albeit involuntarily, it seems like that they're getting in the way a little bit more now than they ever have, and that's not necessarily their fault. The game is faster than it has ever been. So what do you do in that particular situation when you take two guys off the ice? So what Brendan Moore has recommended, if you take two guys off the ice, you'll have more room, and you still have everybody dressed and everything, the other two officials, and you have them in the box. That way, if you have a really, really big melee, if you have a really big scrum after a whistle or something like that, they can jump in there and they can start breaking some stuff up if they have to. And those guys that are not on the ice with the two officials that are on the ice, they've got the headset on, they've got the tablet in front of them, they're on video and they're looking at stuff. So he was talking about some of the stuff, like what are the linesmen really doing? Well, they call on and off sides, they break up the scrums, and they drop the puck during the face-offs and everything. Okay, he's absolutely right about that. And one of the ways that I think that you could have the effect of the officials judging on and off sides, we have to go a little bit old school for this. So I remember when the NHL still had the physical goal judges. It wasn't eliminated until relatively recently. I want to say it was the 2019 season. The American League, the E, and the SPHL, and the FPHL all still have the actual physical goal judge sitting there. The goal judge's job is not to determine whether it was a good goal or not by the rule book. The goal judge's job is to determine did the puck go in the net. They would hit the button to turn the red light on or hit the button for the end of the period for the green light, which in a lot of cases was just automatically synced up to the clock anyway, to determine whether the puck actually went in the net. It's not if it went in the net legally, it's if it went in the net at all. So you don't have that position anymore because you've got the video goal judge reviewing it now and the NHL eliminated it. So, here's what I would do as far as supplementing the on and off sides aspect of that in the NHL now, and eventually maybe it'll have a trickle down effect and come to the other leagues. Put, install some lights inside the stanchions of the glass that are next to the blue line. Just like you have lights behind the net for when the puck goes in and the video goal judge determines it and the red light comes on. Have those by the blue line. So that way, the guy who's sitting there on the tablet, sitting there on the camera and everything, if he sees, okay, that play looked off sides, and now he's not having to skate to try and keep up with it and everything, he's got a frame of reference that's a little bit more removed from it instead of seeing, being right there and having a little bit more time between the time that the particular instance takes place, whether he can determine whether the puck was on and went in correctly, if it was on or off sides or not. He can press a button, you can have a light right there at the blue line, that light comes on, the official blows the whistle, and you've still managed to call on and off sides without a having two guys on the ice. At a minimum, I think you can get to the point where you take one guy off the ice. So that's how I would solve the particular aspect of the on and off side thing. That should be totally done by video and let someone somewhere push on a button determine, hey, that's on or off sides. The guy who's on the ice actually physically blows the whistle. You can maybe have a horn, but I think that would get annoying, so I think it would be better just to have the guy who is already on the ice go ahead and have him, have him blow the whistle. Another thing that he talked about was having one guy designated to drop the puck at all face-offs 
the entire evening or for the entire game. I think that's a great idea because then you get consistency with it because you might be in one end and a guy's sitting there and he's just not really enforcing everybody staying lined up. He's not waving people out of the circle. He just has everybody lined up. And the moment that everything looks copacetic to him, he drops the puck and game's back on. Then you have these other guys that will wave both of the original guys out of the circle or they're more likely to give a delay a game penalty to one team for not being lined up properly or anything like that or a guy who's sitting there, you know, trying to calm everybody down before he drops the puck. So having that consistency with the officials right there of you, okay, I know, you know, Bob the linesman is the one that's dropping the puck all night. I know what to expect with that. I know that I don't need to go up and try to line up perfectly every time and I can cheat a little bit. Or I know that Jeff the linesman who is, you know, kind of a stickler for that type of stuff, I know that I have to be perfect every time or I'm going to get thrown out of the circle. Or the guys around me know I'm not going to be able to jump early and not get thrown out and not get my, you know, centerman thrown out of the circle. So I think that that's a good idea right there. So then you can start instituting all the stuff with the video now that you have that will make the game a little bit easier to keep up with. And also having the two guys that are in the box and still dressed and everything like that. That way if you have a really, really big scrum, they come out, they break it up, and they go back to the tablet. I think all those things are totally workable. There will have to be some details worked out with it, obviously, but I definitely think that there is something there. Um, I think he made some excellent points with that, and I think maybe the league should look into something like that. At minimum, I think you can go down to having three guys on the ice again if you start instituting stuff like this. And on top of that, one of the other reasons he wanted to take two guys off the ice is he wanted the officials to maybe stay in the neutral zone type of area as opposed to being down below at the goal line and everything like that. Um, now, here's where things might get a little sticky and even affecting the advertising aspects of things a little bit. In the event of a penalty, it is automatically reviewed. That would be cool. I think that's a great idea. But it's that's going to be a lot easier said than done. So here's what I have in my mind in the event that somebody takes a penalty. Someone takes a penalty, arm goes up, it's a delayed call. During that amount of time, somebody else is already looking at the tablet and going, okay, was that the right call? And they can look at that, they can determine, okay, it wasn't. Here's the only problem with that. If someone scores on that delayed penalty there, you have the you have the to have to worry about oh wait do they call the penalty back they had an unfair advantage they were able to have the extra attacker and then you're looking at a controversial situation coming from that additionally let's say it doesn't even go that far but the other team touches up the puck and they determine that was the wrong call do you just take the face off back to center ice or how would you determine where the face off is that could be another potential problem with it now when you're getting into instead of taking the traditional TV timeouts that you normally take during a game that every time that a penalty is getting reviewed during that 30 second review and everything like that that that's just time that you take out of the out of the TV timeout so that could be a little bit hairier I definitely think that there's some good ideas there but that's gonna require a little bit more have an in-depth discussion. I definitely think there's something there to review the penalties and everything like that. It's more so the controversy that would have come from somebody scoring a goal during a delayed penalty, and then they're going to talk about how it's the whole offside fiasco on oh, all over again when people score goals during an offside that so gets called back. So that would have to be looked at a little bit differently, I think. I see where he's coming from. That is my thoughts on how that could potentially work. But there's definitely something here because another thing he does, he offers this in a this constructive criticism, he offers it in a package that is actually favorable to the officials. A lot of people are just mad at them all the time and think that, no, oh, they just suck at their job, and that's a different discussion. But one thing he is right about, there's nobody else that is either A, qualified, or B, willing to do that job other than the guys that are already out there right now. And maybe make it a little bit easier considering Okay, for example, if you've ever been to an NHL game and say you've sat right on the glass or really close to it, TV and sitting up higher does not do justice to how fast the game is now, especially at that level. So if you're sitting three rows up and you see all this stuff going on that fast, imagine if you're on ice level with them and eighteen to 20,000 people will be yelling at you and chanting, ref, you suck, if you make a mistake and in the .2 seconds after you raise your arm, you go, oh, wait, I made a mistake. That's not what I thought I saw. So that's the other thing he was talking about. It's like if you do have the ability to review the head whipping and stuff like that, which is not always intended to draw a call. A lot of times you just see a stick coming at your face and you whip your head really hard trying to get out of the way and everything like that, and you end up drawing a penalty because of it and everything. 
there's definitely some things here where I think he's got some great ideas. A few little tweaks maybe need to be made to it, but I think it's absolutely genius, the stuff he's come up with here. So to summarize, I would say yes, let's try and get one or two guys off the ice. Let's have the offside stuff being done strictly with video. I think it'll be easier to make determinations like that from a fixed position. Don't do the tennis umpire chair thing that was talked about at one time. I would highly recommend against that. Reviewing penalties, I think that that's a great idea. I just think it'll have to be tweaked in a certain way to where it doesn't end up getting exploited. And then also the players would have to adjust to it, especially ones who tend to take more liberties, take more stick infractions, and do some more whacking on the hands and stuff like that. That's the only thing that it would be. It would be a pretty harsh adjustment period. Um, not related necessarily to his comments on the officiating, but I definitely think the preseason needs to kind of go away. I don't think you need more than two games. You sure definitely don't need as many as they have now. So that's just my thoughts on that particular matter. So I'll be doing a follow-up video to this if any of this stuff ever gets instituted or if there's any rule changes similar to what Rob Brandamore is recommending. But I think that they're all great ideas and they just need some small adjustments to make it work. So that's all I got for tonight, and I'll see you around.